two. Hey, it's off the rails. Come on. I saw some people worried we wouldn't be back off the rails, but once you're off the rails, you're always off the idle. You're not getting back. Oh! You know, we just had a we had a busy few weeks with fighting and interviewing and roasting, but we're off the rails. We're not going anywhere. We have a fantastic show today that I'm very uh, excited to bring you guys. Sponsored by Kraken Public and Upstart. You know, we did the roast on, for my birthday last week, and um, first of all, everyone did fantastic. For, uh, yes, last week's After Dark, fantastic roast for my birthday. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Round of applause. I'm 36, which is, you know, pretty fucking old. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Don't feel a day over 50. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Right, come on. Is it that bad? I mean, people think I look 50, so I'm just playing up to that. Be honest with me. Do you guys think that I look 36? Just be honest. Don't don't just No, I, I would say up. you look exactly the age that you are. Okay. Yeah. I think I think you look younger than what you are. I think your hair might throw it you're off the a little bit. Maybe you're the only person that thinks that. I know, I swear. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> AB's great. God bless. Don't ask Ian. He'll be like, I think I thought you were eighty. I think you look your age. I think you're age appropriate. You're age kinda, appropriate. There's a lot of there's contradicting factors going on is the thing. You got the hairline of an 18 year old, but the hair color of like a 50 year old. Right. I think the and gray, it averages out to about 36. The gray hair throws people off for sure. In the hands of a 10 year old. No, I'm oh, kidding. Oh, come on. The roast <laughs> I'm is sorry. over. It was too, it was too perfect. Fuck? I'm sorry. Why would you say that? I'm sorry. It was too Maybe, perfect. Why would you say that? I'm just saying you look youthful in general. That's not what you said. You said, why would you say that? This roast was last week. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was, it was too perfect. God, you're such an asshole. That was just, bro, you, you can't be saying shit like that. You really crossed the line. You really crossed the line. I'm deducting 5% from your salary. Shit. 5% means everything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, a lot of people were saying, uh, there was lots of memes about the roast, that I'm, I'm just going to be honest with. I thought I handled it well. People were saying, oh, Ethan's Michael Scott from The Office. I was not. I handled it well. I, I actually fully agree with you. I, I thought you were gracious. Uh, I, Thank I didn't, you. I didn't think that you seemed bitter about it at all. Thank you. I was like, geez, bro. I was like, I did this roast for myself, trying to be gracious and having fun. And then people are still saying I'm Michael Scott. I got I to gotta ask one question, though, okay. regarding the roast. Why did you only hug AB? Um, because he just seemed, he seemed very fragile at that mm. point. Like, he really needed it. So, and by the way, after that hand statement, A.B., don't be <laughs> fucking asking me to go light on your fragile ass. <laughs> yeah, no, I sounded, uh, very shaky, I guess, so. Everyone's like, oh, Ethan cares so much. I mean, A.B. cares so much about Ethan, that's why, but. So it was a hug of, No, like, Abe, well, listen, I'll be on. I think I, if I remember, I can't remember that clearly. I think one of the jokes Ian said is that I have the memory of a goldfish or something. That was, that was me. Well, that was Dan. See, there Which, you go. Case uh, in point. There you go. <laughs> but um, I think AV's the only one that actually made an attempt to say something genuinely nice after the roast. Mm -hmm. All you guys were like, you that's, suck, you're a douche, no, you have tiny hands. That's not true at all. That's not true. He's the only one who talked about the hands. Don't try and put that on. Yeah, he took the fucking low blow and you give him a hug? Yeah. Mm. You guys all want hugs? Come line up. I'll give you a hug I've right now. I've a hug, actually. No. Let's get the hug go hugs going. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're good. We're good on the hugs. I'll take one after the show. All right. That, Zach, I think Zach needs a hug. Zach needs a hug most days. Yeah, I always. Yeah, need Zach a hug. is more deserving of hugs than yeah. AB. Zach is. Excuse me. Oh, because the hand. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Well, anyway, here's the memes. He says, uh, uh, "Ethan, after the roast, I spent the afternoon in the park trying to feed the pigeons. I guess they all flew west for the winter." Not true. I went home and I was fine. This one's fine, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> what did you make that face? I, I don't remember I making don't, that face. You me neither. I do not want to fuck my sister. Shout out to Gladiator, though. That was a great movie. Oh, right. Yeah, he wanted to fuck his sister. Right. Thank you. Boom roasted. This is a good... Um, 
analogy. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ethan today, you know, it's like, come on. I am not Michael Scott. How dare you? <laughs> I love this image, though. Yeah, this one's great. When you're getting roasted by the group chat and just reply, lol, like it's no big deal. <laughs> that is a great photo. Definitely hand it to whoever snipped that one. <laughs> When it's a roast session and you're about to light the homie up. Ian looking demonic, bro. Terrifying. Wasn't hugging Ian after that shit, I'll tell you that. Love me, daddy? You can tell it hurt AB to have to roast Ethan. Ethan while AB was roasting his tiny hands. <laughs> you know, you know I'm insecure about that, AB, and that's something Trisha brought up, and for you to actually bring that up now twice, it's I, below the belt. I didn't know you were insecure about it. You denied it when Trisha brought it up. You're like, I have normal hands, and then... Fuck you, AB. Yeah. <laughs> I am, I, of course I'm insecure about having little baby hands. What the fuck you think? <laughs> what the fuck you think? They're I not am? that small. Yeah, they're not that small. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the roast versus the end. I think that's just, you know... That's just any episode. Ian, yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't that's not an attack. <laughs> um, Ian, the satanic employee. Why are there so many shots of Ian looking? Ian so looking evil. like a. What's yeah. going on here, Ian? I don't know. It's very unsettling. They just oh caught. God. They just found one frame. You know. I wonder. Hey, if, please stand up. No, because the other one that had him looking like that had the the uh, scrolls behind. Oh, him, it's a so different it's moment. It's a different moment. Oh my yeah. God, Ian. Damn. Ethan, when he sees his birthday cake, was that? I think that was from the birthday cake. That was, yes, yes. Didn't eat a lot of it though, so come on. That looks like your favorite part of the show. <laughs> the Every cake cartoon cake. villain, bro. I think I roasted myself. I looked so fat. I looked so fucking fat. Let me pull up this TikTok. God, I ah. Uh, Money, Ethan. Ethan. Yeah. He should just be saying cake, Ethan. Money, Ethan. I left that yogurt store and didn't get the yogurt that I wanted. I know the pain, girl. And then I had a hard time the rest of the week. Today is my birthday. And to <laughs> look how fat I look. I look like friends. one of these dudes. Like my face is normal, but my face is so, my body is so fucked. Have gathered. Do you know what I'm saying? Roast the shit out of me. <laughs> there is uh, it's a, it's an angle so issue, but look how fat my thighs are. It's a combination of the angle and, a, and that chair just kind of forces you to sit in a very Watch awkward him, position. Yeah, let me just mute it. Nobody, I don't care what the chair. Um, the chair is one of the most uncomfortable chairs I've ever sat in. Just straight up. Yeah, there's no lumbar. It's just a straight rigid. <laughs> it's oh. so bad. You you kind of you kind of look like Heat Miser when he tried to ruin Christmas. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. No. Don't know the reference. But I've got a body like, uh, I mean, pear-shaped. I mean, it really is a pear-shaped body. Look, man, look, here's the deal. It's like a roasted pear. <laughs> anyway, here's more small hand jokes. It's good to know our king has a, back, has a backup business in case H3 fails. Ethan's little hands. Crooks, crannies, holes. Not a single place these tiny hands can't go. That was just, that was a line straight from uh, Ian's roast, was it not? He was proposing that as a business venture for you? That, that was, that yeah. was me. Oh, that was AB. I'm yeah. sorry. Right, AB. I said in a world with really YouTube. really honing in on that. Yeah. yeah. Ethan's little hands. And this is me in my college room waiting for Ian to arrive. <laughs> so anyway, but on a serious note, thank you guys were all super funny. That was a great event that you guys put on. And uh, it was fantastic. So great work, everyone. I just wanted to review the um, the roast memes, frankly. Mm -hmm. And uh, five percent meme still going strong. <coughs> there's there's a cosmic thing going on in the universe now that we've been thinking about five percent. It's showing up everywhere. We see Joe Rogan talking about. Joe Rogan is very passionate about the five percent. Five percent difference is astronomical. It's everything. 5% means everything. Yeah. Uh, here's me apparently talking about 5% that people were freaking out about. There's no such thing as a coincidence. This was an old pod. But they'll reach a deal. You know? They'll get there. They'll, they'll figure it out. Disney's like, look, dude, we just upped our Disney tickets to $200 for, per, for just a one-day pass. We've, we've, 
we're stretching everything. We're making as much. We, we don't know where to get more revenue. So we're going to need more than 5%. you believe how much it costs to go to Disneyland? No. It's crazy, man. Or they'll reach the deal. It's 5%. You know, the 5%, 5 and a discussion about the price yeah. of Disney tickets. It's yeah. like crazy. It's Dude, prophetic. It's it's crazy. The 5% is sewn into the fabric of the universe and existence. It takes that 5%. Yeah. I know. We're going to need more than 5%. Oh, okay. So, and then I know we talked about Britney last week, but there's been some fantastic free Britney updates. Specifically, you know that we love Wendy Williams and Wendy Williams went off and we're all free Britney here, but you know, Wendy Williams takes everything way too far. And she said something that even freaked herself out. Wendy Williams went full ISIS and it's fucking amazing. Watch this shit, bro. This is clip of the... It's so funny, you guys. <laughs> she literally went full ISIS and freaked her, and the whole audience turned on her real quick. Watch this. How dare you, Mr. Spears? You had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears. Death to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> Got a little carried away. <laughs> <laughs> Death to all of them, and then she's the audience immediately turns on her, and she's she like, she's like, who said that? <laughs> watch this. <laughs> oh, why is it muted? The fuck happened? Why is it muted? Did you? Is it muted on Reddit? I didn't do shit, dude. I just played the fucking video. <laughs> why was it muted? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wendy. To Mrs. Spears, death to all of them. <laughs> Even the audience seemed to think Wendy Williams went too far. <laughs> I love the background. They're like, Jesus. Yeah, you hear somebody like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best thing ever. One more time. Yeah. How dare you, Mr. Spears? You had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears. Death to all of them. <laughs> what happened? Even the audience seemed... Bro, she went full ISIS. She's ready to behead Jamie Spears. The emphasis on death is what made it so exciting. Yeah. Death to all of them. When have you ever uttered death to all of them? Death when to all of them. When has anybody ever uttered those words that's not like a jihadist or something? Death to all of them. I could think of one example, but it'll get us demonetized. Of oh, another. Keemstar? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, he said death to all uh, people that look like me, who, who uh, practice the yeah. same religion as me. Dixon. Yeah. Death to all of them. <laughs> Dude, that's the best. That's so funny. It's so funny. Wendy Williams is uh, the funniest person on TV, <laughs> hands down. As you had me fooled, and you too, Mrs. Spears, death to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Who says that? What is this? Death to all of them. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, someone says they edited it out of the YouTube upload. That's fantastic. Yeah, I wonder why. Oh, well, it's going to live here forever, Wendy. <laughs> Zach's got his finger on the button forever. Death to all of them. <laughs> God. Yeah, Britney's Death. coming out though. I'm Team Britney all the way, bro. I, I can't. The more I learn about this, the more just, I'm just like, mm -mm, girl, we need Britney's life back now. She filed to end the, the um, conservatorship. It's happening. We're freeing Britney. We are freeing Jimmy Britney. Allen. And we are, and not, and then doesn't stop there. We are killing everybody involved. We are not. We disavow any threat of violence uh, on this show. Oh, this is a message I was just to, following the, Wendy's to the YouTube Raiders. We Death do not do all, all of them. We do not want Death anyone dead. To all of them. Death. I'm just Death. following Wendy's lead. I'm just following orders. Death. Death. Oh, Brittany's out. She, Brittany's mask off, man. She posted, I'm here in Maui. It's pretty crazy now. The paps know where I am, and it's really not fun. You know, I got to say, this poor woman, she's still being hounded by the paparazzi. After everything she's been through, she's kind of stepped out of the limelight now in the middle years of her life. But this girl cannot stay out of the of the of the lens of the public with this whole 
you know, conservatorship now, and the fucking paparazzi are back at it. Let him bring it alone. Hey, man, dude. Death to all of them. <laughs> oh. Peace and love only. I'm just following orders. To the paparazzi. We I, love the paparazzi. I'm just following orders. She says, it's pretty hard to go anywhere because these silly faces keep popping up and taking my picture. Not only do they take my picture, they distort my body and mess with the image, and it's embarrassing. I know my body's not perfect, but I definitely do not look like how they portray me. It's rude. It's mean. So, Pap, kindly fuck you and fuck you and death to all of them. Death to all of them. <laughs> death to all of them. Uh. <laughs> death to all of them. Death to all of them, man. Anyway, she got a video here. Dude, I I believe the paparazzi are like distorting or f- shit to make it more clicky. Pat, do and doze if you're a pat. Don't talk to me while I'm texting. It's rude. Don't talk to me while I'm texting. Mm. Work it, girl. Work it. We are out on the beach in Maui, living our best life. This is my body. Stop messing with my pics and editing them to the point where it's embarrassing. Death we love- to all of them. <laughs> I love this video, man. Where Who edited this? This is fucking awesome, dude. I wonder if she edited this herself. It's fantastic content. Britney Spears' Instagram is uh, un- unbeaten. Un- oh, what's the word? It's, it's, uh, it's undefeated. Thank you. Yeah. She said the title of this post is Fuck You. Bop, 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 mute. You see that? The title is Fuck You. Mask off, Britney. It's Britney, bitch. Death to all of them. Oh, I think that is the title of the Lily Allen song. That's oh, it is? Ooh, that's racy. Death G. to all of them. You know what I think about those paparazzis? Death to all of them. Death. <laughs> that's the fucking thing, bro. I can't. Death to all <laughs> Um... <laughs> One other thing, you know, I want to talk about at the top. Uh, shout out to Ringo Starr, friend of the show. Peace and love, peace and love. This is a serious message from Ringo Starr's Lingo team. We are dropping our lawsuit against the Ringo penis ring. Peace and love, peace and love. <laughs> Ringo Starr drops legal battle against Ringo penis rings. That's a bit of a stretch, Ringo. Let's be honest. I'm going to come. Star filed a lawsuit in 2019 objecting to the name of the penis ring. He claimed the brand was identical in appearance, sound, connotation, and pronunciation to his own, own name. I mean, it's the, it's the Ringo penis. I mean, it's a first name, bro. You, you, I mean, come on. Sign it down. I'm Dick Tip. Dick Tip? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ringo isn't his actual name, right? Yeah, it's Richard. Well, so I mean, whatever it is, you can't just own Ringo, right? I mean, are there any other Ringos? I it, mean, if you're, if you're, he kind of does own it. Well, copyright works like if it's someone who's doing a musical act, then we can discuss copyright. If someone's right. making a penis ring. That's a whole different. Well, maybe earth. he's planning on branching out to some new uh, industries. Yeah, you know? If Ringo is ha- planning on launching his own penis ring called the Ringo, which is an interesting idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not. Um, maybe he should partner with them. Then you may have an IP dispute. Why doesn't he? I mean, he should be the face of the Ringo. This penis ring is interesting. Though. It looks like a lifesaver. I mean, <laughs> yeah. If you look up Ringo pro- uh, products on Google, you'll see like herbal oils, anti-fungal uh, creams, dog toys, ring cleaners, e juice. Really? Yeah. I'm it's gonna come. Not his products. Not his products. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Huh. So anyway, peace and love to the Ringo penis ring. We are dropping all legal charges after the date of June 30th. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Shout out. Okay, well, there's one other thing I wanted to discuss here before we get into it. Today we're going to be talking about Trisha Paytas. Obviously, uh, I don't know if you've seen. She apologized to me. I'm going to be responding to that. And um, Austin McBroom, you know, we've we've talked about the Ace family, bro. This guy is the sketchiest dude on the internet, bro. And he's just schemed a bunch of millions of dollars from a bunch of other people. But the final thing is, you know, the fire haircuts. We've talked about fire haircuts before on the show, and I've expressed interest in wanting to do it myself. And uh, let me refresh your memory a little bit. We have a barber here on standby who's going to be doing a fire haircut for me today. 
Yeah, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I've been wanting to do try the fire haircut. Oh, these guys have badass hair, so they can't be wrong about it. Fire! That little bit of music, that was like the the Ghanan funeral music that was playing, oh, right? Oh, was it? Yeah, that seems pretty bad to play on your video of well, they're uh, not Ghana, dude. hair on fire. Very popular meme song. Fire! Uh, um, so these guys have beautiful hair. And you know I love an element of danger in my life as well. Unfortunately, I do. I do know that, yes. Yeah. That's what, you know. So I've just been really enchanted by these guys. Watch this. And I want to do it. And Dan has been saying it's not safe. It's not. Look at this, bro. This guy's head is on fire. And he's just wow. sitting there like nothing. He's, having, he's cheesing. He's laughing. He's smiling. <laughs> I'm sure these guys have safety protocol. You know, I'm sure there's someone on standby with the, uh huh, with the, oh know, yeah, fire no, it extinguisher. Looks, it looks very official and safe. You think that's a smile of joy or or like I might die right now? Look at him. He's like, oh boy. That looks like joy. Yeah, just some homies having a good time. Yeah, just lighten up your homies. <laughs> well, anyway, I do love their hair. So we have been fortunate enough to find someone here in LA to perform a fire haircut for me. And I have that here for you guys now. So please enjoy me getting a fire haircut. Yo, this is sick. Dude, these barbers are, yo, Dan, check this out. These barbers are cutting hair with fire. Oh and yeah. Yeah, we watched this on the pod. I can't get over how unsafe and insane it is. Totally crazy. <laughs> what the hell? But I actually, I, wanna, I do wanna try it for the show. Try it. Yeah, you look at this guy. This guy's a professional for his chair. I want this guy to come cut my hair for real. No. You think we're not serious, are you? We can't do that. What do you mean? Let's I mean, find someone in know, LA to cut my hair with fire. You're gonna wind up looking like me, dude. Are you serious? Dan, I don't know how many ways I need to tell you this. I want to light my head on fire. I can't I can't let you do that. This is insane. Like these people are crazy. Zach, will you call a fire barber for me? God. This is gonna be sick. This is gonna be sick. What I wanna do is I wanna prep your hair first. Okay. Before the fire gets hot. Wow. This haircut is gonna be the hottest haircut you've ever seen. These are professionals. Do not try this at home. Yes. These are professional firebenders. And um, they're here to set me on fire. Oh, where I smell burning hair. What are we doing right now? We are cauterizing and healing the ends of your hair. Got it. Okay. Oh, got it, got it. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's dripping, maybe. Oh, yeah? He's... No, no, not the drip. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like a flame sword in my face. Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. How do you feel? What do you feel here? Um, like, good? I need to create, like, some connection. Oh, okay. okay. Should I look at you in the eyes? No, you, you, oh, just, fine. I'll just, yeah. I'll look at Ian. So, all I need you to do is just relax. Mm -hmm. Do not think about anything. Mm -hmm. Just think about yourself. Keep concentrated looking inside yourself. Now you can look at my eyes. Okay. And just trust me. Okay. Okay? Yes. I got you. Are you okay? Are you okay? Time. Are you okay? No. <laughs> this was not safe. This is not okay. Damn, what the fuck was that? What do you mean? Your, your hair looks pretty good. You gotta, you don't touch me. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were in danger. I was, dude, I was doing such a- It's my uh, responsibility. I was unblocking my chocolates from the whole season, bro. <laughs> How am I supposed to unblock now? There's a little bit of, you want me to get? 
<laughs> Why'd you do that? I just inhaled more shit. Listen, man, it's uh, just trying to keep things Get safe. Get the fuck yeah. away from me, bro. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> keep you safe. Dan fucked it all up as usual. I was trying to vibe out with my fire hair. And Dan wouldn't let me do it. After everything, you know, he still doesn't trust me. So, thanks, Dan. Shame. We love Dan. Those guys were characters, man. The guys who came and did the fire haircut. Shout out to them. You remember their name? Their hair salon? I sure do. Yeah, give them a shout out. I will shout them out right now as soon as I bring up my notes wherever I If wrote you guys are down. in the market for a fire haircut, these guys will take care of you. And it's a whole like a mind and body experience with the chakras and the shoulders and the touches and everything. Yeah, it was uh, a J J R and Yana were the two, and they run a salon over in Beverly Hills where they specialize in this kind of stuff. And um, yeah, memes aside, they they actually do know what they're doing. Uh, they kind of explained to us that- Do not try this at home. Yeah, don't try it at home. A lot of the videos that you see online, they're doing it the wrong way. It is very dangerous, but if you do it properly, it it, it is a legitimate technique, apparently. Yeah, I want to say, I want to watch a Bravo show about those two, just lighting people on fire. <laughs> and, I'd watch that. Yeah. They're interesting. They're like a that. couple, they bicker. Yeah. It's awesome. They're like cutting my hair and bickering. I was like, holy shit. It's like a whole entertainment package. Anyway, so there you go. We finally can lay the fire haircut meme to rest. We've done it. I wanted him to really light my head on fire, but they're like too serious. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, no. They took their craft too serious. I was like, listen, just spray a bunch of shit, fuel on my hair, and light me on fire. And they're like, listen, we can't, that's not safe. And I was like, ah, what, what are all these people on the internet doing? I see this guy, like, he's got like five feet of flame on his head. <laughs> he was down to clown a little bit with the. Uh where he was, you know, spraying the uh, hairspray through it to make it like a giant flame and everything. So. Yeah, I think if the I think if his girlfriend wasn't here, I could have got him to light me on fire. You keep saying that. I don't know if they're a couple. They are a couple. Okay, I, I think so. <laughs> no, they were a couple. They were calling each other babe and stuff. I, that might just be like hairdresser talk, though. Nah, they're a couple. Okay, fair enough. But anyway, I he was ready to light my hair on fire, but she was being too professional. One other thing, also before we move on to the main uh, topics here. Poor Boogie. He sent in a roast. And it was never presented. Aww. And I was sending everyone thank yous. And I was like, I see Boogie sent one, but I didn't see it. What happened, Dan? Well, yeah, that's on me. We, um, because I was getting so many videos. And if people remember, they were all in like a box with the flames behind it and everything. And that's because I had to conform all, you know, some of them were iPhone videos, some of them were for real cameras, all, all over the place with the formats and everything. So I had to conform everything to one spec, and I did it as a big batch, and uh, I don't know, I just, uh, I missed it. it it's my, my fault. Thanks, Dan. Yep. Poor Boogie was probably watching at home like, yeah, I'll, I know. I can't <laughs> wait for mine to show up. I felt really bad. <laughs> and then we're like, bye. Yeah, Ian, or uh, Ethan messaged me, it was just like... What happened to Boogie? And like, you know, as soon as you said it, I was just like, oh my God, what did happen to Boogie? That's, that's he must have thought like we just didn't like his <laughs> and didn't show it. I haven't seen it yet, by the way. I didn't watch any of them beforehand. So here's Boogie's late, uh, but uh, not forgotten. Boogie, go ahead. Better not be about my small fucking hands. <laughs> What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988 coming at your live, listening to the power of the internet. And this is a quick little birthday message for the one and only Ethan Klein. And Ethan, I just want to wish you a happy birthday. Uh, what else do you get for the man who has everything and deserves absolutely none of it? I mean, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't necessarily believe that, but some people do believe that because you have really bad judgment calls. I mean, Elo was a good choice, but then I, you, you did try to befriend Trisha Paytas. You let me be on your podcast uh -oh. three times, and yet you've only had Bo Burnham on there once. I think it just comes down Not to a matter choice. of self-control. <laughs> <laughs> something I clearly struggle with. I think you just don't have good control when it comes to making judgment calls. I think you have less control over your judgment calls than you do your own face muscles. You once told me I inspired you to follow in my footsteps. This doesn't feel right out of the context of the roast. It just feels like he's being super mean to me, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> like, like don't hold it against this Boogie. is a good roast yeah, but now I, I just feel like why am i watching this guy just be super mean to me <laughs> i'm just sitting here minding my own business okay go ahead boogie become uh, the successful youtuber you are today 
Well, no one's saying you have to follow my footsteps into obscurity, Ethan. Stop fucking up. But even with your recent bad decision making, I have to say you're still inspiring people like me and Wings of Redemption and Dark Side Phil, proving to us that even an idiot can still be successful. Those are deep cuts I didn't get. I'm assuming... Wings of Redemption, Dark Side Phil. Dark Side Phil, I know that name. I couldn't tell you who it is, though. I'm not supposed to pause. I'm just going to let him go. Yeah, just and occasionally get laid at least long enough to bring some kids into the world. Mm -hmm. All joking aside, seriously, though, uh, happy birthday, Ethan. You are an inspiration to me and many other people, and you're not all bad at decision making. Uh, the H3 podcast, one of the smartest decisions you ever made. Uh, starting Teddy Fresh with Ela, one of the smartest decisions you've ever made. And of course, marrying Ela and starting a family with her. The smartest decision. Okay, chill, but he's almost. I feel like he's trying to make a pass on my wife. All things about how great he is. He's, he's uh, you know, you were complaining <laughs> earlier that there wasn't enough nice stuff. Uh, yeah, he's just complain. He's complimenting my wife. Uh huh. But he's trying to fuck Ela. <laughs> Anyone could have made in that situation. So happy birthday, my friend, and let's just hope Ela doesn't have good judgment either, because I mean, she did marry you, and if she ever wises up and leaves you, uh, you're gonna wish you had a prenup. Trust me, I speak from experience. Ela, if you ever... I would not ever... Get, first of all, if we ever get divorced, which she deserves everything, she deserves everything, is that we don't need a prenup, trust me. Half is generous. Or, I mean, it's generous to me. I believe that man. Call me. Oh, Boogie. You called it. You know you what? You called that, it. That was a good roast. It was a good one. And I will also say Boogie's looking good. It looks like he's keep losing weight. Yeah. He looks healthy. Yeah, I'm happy for him. The, the only man on the internet with more fupa than me. <laughs> Neck fupa than me. <laughs> Those two names that were mentioned are creators that were banned for either hateful speech or uh, hateful conduct. I, see, I, that's what I thought, but I didn't want to say that and be wrong. But yeah. <laughs> oh, no. they got banned for being douches? Or demonetized or oh. permanent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Death to all of them. That's Easy. right. Wendy, that's going to be on. us after this episode if you keep playing that sound. And I'm sorry, Boogie, for the fat fupa joke. It's just I felt like because we're in the roasting. It's okay, it's right? It's roast mode. To, yeah, you can. Thank you. A little reverse on that. Okay. All right. Out of roast mode. Thank you, Boogie. Now out of roast mode. No more roast. Exiting roast mode. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's throw it to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about Austin McBroom uh, scamming the internet, as usual. And, of course, Trisha Paytas. Apology to yours truly, Ethan Klein. Time to take a short break. <laughs> Thank you, Rudy. <laughs> Kraken Exchange. For the last 10 years, Kraken has been one of the best platforms for trading crypto online. And now with the new Kraken app, it's easier than ever to buy and sell over 60 of the most popular cryptocurrencies on the go 24-7. Not only that, Jesse Wellens. That's the fucking prank guy. Yep, Nodger. <laughs> wait, wait, isn't his name similar? <laughs> wait, his name's super similar. What is it? It's, well, his name is Jesse, but it's not Wellens. What's his last name? Um, I, I, the pa <coughs> Powell? I, I, oh, yeah, Powell, you're right. Fuck. Sorry, Jesse. You know how my brain works. Jesse Powell, friend of the show, is the owner of Kraken. This guy is a solid, awesome dude, friend of the show. I would not hesitate to send everyone over to kraken.com slash h3 or learn more. Search Kraken in any of the app stores. Um, you can simply download the Kraken app, connect your bank account, and start investing for as little as $10. Just one minute is all it takes to get started. And with the new Kraken app, your portfolio is going to be right in your pocket wherever you go. You can monitor your investments, track your winners and losers, keep tabs on your favorite projects, or view the most traded cryptocurrency of the day. It's got all the features you need with none of the complexity. It's a simpler way to invest in crypto. Go to kraken.com slash h3 to learn more or search Kraken in an app store. Brought to you by our friend Jesse Powell. Not Wellens. Two different people. Thank you, Kraken. Love you. Today's sponsor is Public.com, an investing app where you can buy and sell stocks, follow investors, and share ideas. Public, you know, public sponsors, great creators that we love, like DeFranco, Emma Chamberlain, Cody Co. 
Graham Stephen, who we had a whole debate about last time. Yes, and we found out that Love is a giant fan of. Who, well, we Love is a giant of. fan of everyone. Said he's watched every video of his. Graham Stephen, shout out. He's a mogul. And now, H3 Podcast. Public is the best place to invest, especially if you're just getting started. The app is free, and you can start with as little as $1, which is what sets it apart from other investing apps, is that you can buy slices of shares instead of the whole thing we discovered last time. You want a, uh, you want a whole stock of Amazon? It's like $3,000. It's kind of a big barrier of entry if you're just trying to have some fun, trying to learn. You know, you know it's expensive to learn stocks if you have to buy a whole share. So it's a good place to just learn, get comfortable, and eventually when you're ready to put some real money in uh, to do that as well. Like I said, you can start with just one dollar. Buy slices, portions of stocks. And they don't sell your data or information to third parties or market makers like other investing apps, fuckers. You'll get one free slice of a stock when you go to public.com slash h3h3 to download the public app. To get started today, Make sure to follow me. Do we have a your phone there, right, Dan? Yeah, so you can follow me. What's your... Uh, Just that's what... word love. And so with public, you don't even need to put in the money because you're getting a free slice at public.com slash h3. This is a great way to get involved, start learning, and get started. Once again, make sure to go to public.com slash h3h3 to get a free stock slice. Link is in the description. Thank you, public. consolidating your credit card debt never felt so good with upstart are you carrying a credit card balance month after month you're not the only one high interest rates make it hard to pay off your debt but upstart can help join the thousands of happy borrowers who made that final payment upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment. Ooh. Unlike other lenders, Upstart looks at more than just your credit score, like your income, employment history. This means they can offer smarter rates with trusted partners. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front. Up, yeah, up front. Yeah, I've thought they were doing a play on words, but it's not. Up front. Up front for loans between $1,000 and $50,000. You can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Oh, find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash h3. That's upstart.com slash h3. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we are the motherfuckers who sent them. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash h3. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. Um, so, you know, Trisha put out an apology to me. She put out a video called Apology to Ethan. And I do want to comment on this, I guess. Uh, I should I should comment on it. Um, look. First of all, let me say I appreciate the apology. I appreciate that she's making an effort to make peace with us, which I think is important. You know, it's, it's nice. Um, so... I appreciate that. She apologized for uh, um, sharing our text messages. And uh, she made a general apology. Um, she apologized to the crew. Um, look, she, she said in her video, I'm going to make this apology and Ethan doesn't have to accept it. It's not that I don't accept her apology. It's that I don't want to, I don't want to like gloss over. I just, I don't want to gloss over too much what went down. I mean, it's a lot for me to forgive this fast because 
this is a person who I considered, you know, family, a close friend, someone I trusted, someone that we were working together with, that I had a, a very close relationship, someone who I was confiding in. And, you know, as much as I understand that she has, like, conditions that make, you know, processing emotions hard for her, um, this is somebody who I perceived as... <laughs> Dude, she she honestly, without mincing words, was trying to, like, ruin my life. To She was saying everything she could to attack me personally, to attack the business. I mean, she was, like, liking tweets that were saying I was a racist. And, you know, these things really... And she's like, and like the whole Disneyland thing and digging up all this and like and her sister, which I know it was her sister. She put out that video, but like that she doesn't, her sister doesn't just put out that video in a vacuum. That's the result of them all talking about stuff. And like, I feel like maybe, maybe I'm reading too into it, but I feel like that video her sister put out is the product of like them all circle jerking about what a piece of shit I am. Right. She said that I'm a liar. She said that I lied about her wanting to fire the crew. She said I lied about her saying that uh, she, I mean, look, dude, Trisha does this thing where she goes, I never, Trisha never explicitly said, um, I want to fire the crew, right? What she did say is that, I only hire fans. They're not professionals. She's not comfortable with being them with them. And if we're going to continue frenemies, we need a whole new staff. We need a whole new crew. So did she say, um, I want you to fire the crew? No, but like you said everything. You li you did say that without explicitly saying, I want to fire the crew. You know, did she say I sexually harassed her? No, she didn't say that, but she said, I was making everything sexual. I was making her beauty products sexual. That I, She was saying that I intentionally brought up this candle thing with her family on the way to Disneyland just to get a rise of them, which to me is just so offensive, bro. That's just a horrible thing to say. Like, you know. And she, I feel like she really tried her app. She, she tried to ruin my life, my reputation, my business. And not only that, there's there's been a lot of heavy emotions within the family because obviously she's engaged to my brother-in-law, Ela's brother, and this is far-reaching implications with with Ela's whole family. And it's not been it's been very difficult. It's been very stressful. And um It's nice that she's apologizing now after trying to ruin my whole life. And you know, if this, this is an apology to me, right? It says apology to Ethan. This is my apology. Oh, I watched the whole 40 minute video and I watched all 10 mid rolls. It's like, do I have to watch 10 mid rolls to get my apology? Why do I have to watch 10 mid rolls to get my apology? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven mid rolls. If this is an apology to me, why do I have to watch it on her YouTube channel with ten mid rolls? A phone call would have been nice. She has my number. She knows that I'm open to talk anytime. She messed, you know what I mean? And she apologized to the crew. She said previously she doesn't have any of the crew's contact information. I'm sorry, but that's not true. We're all in a group chat on WhatsApp. She has everybody's phone number. She could have called them to apologize. They don't need to watch 11 mid-rolls to get their apology either. So do I appreciate her apology? Yes, it is nice and helpful just to clear the air. But is it the most personal and meaningful apology that I have to watch it on her YouTube channel with 11 mid-rolls? No. No, it's not. You know, frankly. I 
I don't know. It's like, you know, and she, she says stuff like, you know, I'm over wanting an apology. I have to move on. I don't, I honestly don't know. I've, this is someone who I've tried my best in every conceivable way to be, to be loving and supportive and gracious. And then like the minute things went wrong this third time, she, she, I mean, no, I don't know. She, she, tr I really feel like she tried to ruin my life. And the good thing for me is because, you know, another thing she says is, well, why did you post that final episode if it made me look so bad? First of all, you guys can understand. Trisha put out her video before the final episode was even posted publicly. And, you know, she's the one who told me to post it. We were talking about it privately, and she was so convinced she was right. She's like, put it up unedited, and let's see who's right. I was like, okay, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm the asshole. And so she told me to put it up. She put out her video saying things were this way. And so, of course, I've got to put up the video so people can have the, the, uh, the objective situation and put their own judgment from. And I, listen— the only thing that saved me from Trisha trying to do everything to ruin my life is the fact that all of our fights and confrontation were put up unedited on Frenemies. Because if I was like, you know what, I'm going to not air this to protect Trisha, unfortunately, that gives Trisha all the space she needs to say, well, this is what happened. This is whatever happened, happened. And then it's my word against her. I don't want to be in that situation where it's my word versus her. The whole frenemies experiment was like, whatever happens, happens, and this is the whole wild ride. So, like, I understand people being like, oh, you shouldn't have posted it. But if I don't post it and you guys can't see what actually happened, then then she could say whatever the fuck she want. And she tried. She tried to say whatever she wanted about me. So, you know... I'm glad she's apologized. You know, again, I appreciate that. But, um, I need, uh, time before I can really, uh, you know, move on from this or to come to some understanding from it because. I don't know. I just think like it scares it scares me. It scares me because this is someone who I confide in, who I consider friend and family, and someone who was you know willing at the time of crisis to go out publicly and say anything about me. And I frankly can't. I can't risk as much as I love and respect Trisha and and she's so talented, entertaining, and all the great things about her. I can't risk having someone close to me in my life who was willing to just step out into the public eye and say anything about me when things go a little south. That's just not something I, that, that's just not something that uh, I can accept, frankly. And, you know, we had fought before, but this obviously went to a new degree where she's posting our text messages. She's saying, I'm a liar. I'm a manipulator. And, you know, one thing that really upset me was like her going and amplifying people going, put making these whole things about like, oh, Ethan's racist or whatever stupid things I've done in the past. She's out there liking those tweets. And it's like, OK, so. So this is nothing to do with our fight. This is just you trying to hurt me as much as possible. I understand this. And I understand that she was hurt and she was confused and, you know, she felt trapped, but I just can't bring that. I can't invite that back into my life. I can't. Um, for, ever, for myself, for my business, for my family. Um, I don't know. It was that whole thing. I cannot emphasize just how much it hurt me on a personal level. And um, I'm still recovering from it. So while I appreciate the apology, it would have been nice to get an apology where I didn't have to watch 10 mid rolls to get it. I don't know if that's too much to ask. And listen, she can get out there and get paid and do her thing and make that paper. You know, I'm all about that thing. I always support Trisha doing her thing and getting paid. But like, is this an apology to who is this an apology to? Is it to me? It says apology to Ethan. I think it's to me. Why didn't she call me and give me an apology? 
or send me a thoughtful email or met or you know what I mean? Because like, it's a lot. Of, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> anyway, listen. I'm glad. I'm glad she made the apology though. In short, and um, you know. That's pretty much all I have to say about it without, I don't want to, you know, that's just my honest thoughts. You guys want, I'm sure you guys wanted to hear it. It's very public, all this now. So, you know, I'm sure there's, there'll be a time and place where we can reconcile, but I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> and, um, that's about it. I mean, that's, that's. I don't know what more I have to say about it. Please buy Friend of Me's merch. Coming out soon. I'm royally fucked. <laughs> Friend of Me's merch is coming out in like a week or two. I, I really need you guys to buy that shit. <laughs> oh, there was one funny thing I actually wanted to, sh to share. She managed to sneak in an attack on Gabby Hanna during my apology. Here, you guys can enjoy this. I thought it was funny cycle through people quickly and he's obviously worked with the same crew so I'm, this has nothing to do with him i don't want people to think that's where i'm going with this but people you know underpaid dancers um there's youtubers you know i know a guy youtuber that does music videos and doesn't pay his dancers at all and you know there's just people who don't respect the work that people put in or people like gabby yelling at the escape the night crew because they changed the schedule or didn't have food for her when she didn't even put in the request you know it's like Trisha, are you apologizing to me? Why are we talking about Gabby Hanna not putting in food requests? Listen, Ethan, I am just, I'm so sorry. This, this apology is brought to you by Walmart. Shop for less. Anyway, Ethan, I was just saying that I know I really fucked up and I just want to apologize for sending your text message. This apology is brought to you by King Kong. Streaming now. Oh, okay. This episode, this, anyway, like I was saying, like, can you imagine if I got a call and then she had like 10 sponsors during our call? Hold on one sec. Uh, listen, I, I feel horrible about how, how everything went down and uh, Costco, world market. On sale, 15% off. July 4th sale. Anyway, I was saying, I'm just really sorry. She's hustling though, you know what I mean? You got you you know, everyone got to get that on that paper on that paper chase. You know, that 5% ain't going to fucking fill itself up. He takes that 5%. <laughs> Those coffers ain't going to fill themselves up. And listen, you can't get mad. That 5% meme is way too fire to drop. There's no way I'm means fucking everything. What? Five percent means everything. Yeah, this is Joe Rogan's been saying that for forever. Five percent means everything. <sighs> you know, so get that paper, I guess. But it doesn't feel that genuine to me. Is all I'm saying. Okay, peace and love. Um, oh, I also want to say we put out a families today, <laughs> Wednesday. We talked about my. I asked my mom to summarize the Trisha Paytas versus Gabby Hanna beef. It's the spiciest beef on the internet currently, and so, you know, there were some insensitive remarks made about Trisha. I just want to say that those this, that was filmed before we saw this apology. I, that I knew it was posted on that day. I didn't know it was even posted on that day until later in that day after we had posted the family. So I don't want it to seem like I was like, oh, she apologized. Let's you know. So apologies to Trisha for that, you know, bad timing, I guess. Um, I'll issue an apology to her with 20 mid-rolls. Smash that like button. <laughs> kind of like the idea of just making an apology with as much mid-rolls as possible. Can we just on this part put in a mid-roll every minute? <laughs> no, no, we shouldn't. That is funny, though. It's a funny idea. You know... And it would be not, like she apologized specifically for 
leaking all of our text messages, which is true. That was a line that she crossed where when she started posting all of our text messages, I just texted her. I said, look, Trisha, you're posting our private DMs. You know, this is a line you're crossing that I, I have to um, discontinue this conversation now and pretty much ended communication at that point. Cause it's like, dude, I mean, if it's to that level, then it wasn't supposed to go to that level. We were friends with this. We're not, fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like there, I thought there was a level of trust between us where it was like, we're not going to get to that point where you start blasting out all of our private messages. And so for me, I was like, this is not, I thought there was something sacred about our relationship where it was going to, it was, it was able to withstand the, the storm that happens, you know, the storms that happen in Trisha's life where I thought we had built something more sp kind of special for that reason. And so when she started posting all the text messages, I thought like, man, you know, it really did end up in the place that I really hoped it wouldn't because that, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it sucks. I loved that show, Frenemies. I loved it. I loved it. And it meant so much to so many people, too, that, like, it's really hard to say goodbye to it. It was just, it was a special, beautiful thing that I'll always cherish. It was just, um, I, you know, I miss it already on Mondays, every Monday getting together, seeing Trisha and Moses and filming. It's like, I miss it, too, and I'm sad it's over, but, like, I just feel like it's not, uh, especially with her being engaged to Moses, it's just not, it's not healthy for the family. Seeing the way that it ended, I just, you know. But she, so I was saying, she apologized for the text messages. That she, she didn't apologize for saying I lied about her wanting to fire the crew. She didn't apologize about saying I lied and manipulated and I'm psychotic freak about uh, saying her claiming that I sexually harassed her. By the way, difference between harassment and assault. Let's make that clear. You know, so I don't know. I don't know what really she's sorry. I don't know how much she's sorry for. She didn't really specifically say. She says that she, she was expecting an apology from me. She doesn't, she got over it though. She let it go. I don't know what she wants an apology for. I don't, I would apologize if I knew. I think she thinks that I lied about her, and I don't know how that's possible. Anyway, I don't. I don't want to linger on this too long. I just want to acknowledge it. I'm happy she apologized. I'm grateful. It's nice that we can kind of like just put this whole thing to rest for now, and I need some time to recover, to make kind of like I think what's most important is just in the background to make things functional for our families. Uh, which is going to be hard. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be hard. It is going to be hard. Can you get a mid-roll right there, Dan? Like two in a row? <laughs> you got it. Thank you. <laughs> That's all. I don't know what to say. I don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. Okay? What can I say? You know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I said it all, I think. You want to talk about Austin McBroom? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yo, this guy, Austin McBroom, is such a freaking scammer. I hope this guy goes to jail. This is the guy. We did a content court about him. He's the Ace Family guy. He's the guy with the uh, stop soundbite. Yeah, Stop! we have a uh, a fun little uh, edit oh. that it may be made if you want to show that real quick. Oh, is this uh, it? A reminder, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Uh oh. Austin, no. <laughs> yeah, he was no! he was flooding his whole neighbor's yard with this. No! He put a jet ski in his pool, oh and water. You can see there's like a mudslide occurring, and his neighbors are screaming, "Stop!" And you can hear it in his video. You can hear it down. It's the guy is just the worst. I love the dual perspective here. This is powerful. Stop! Stop. 
dude, why are you doing that? It's like he's trying to kick water out. I mean, he is. He's trying to kick water out. But there was like a whole CSI analysis on this where you can see the neighbor screaming stop. And then in the video, you can also hear him from the Ace family's perspective screaming stop. So they obviously heard him and chose to ignore. Go ahead. Zach, Zach just... Yeah, that's from the Ace <laughs> family video. <laughs> but we talked about he did this. uh he did this huge basketball event where he said he was going to be donating it to charity. Twice. Twice. It, he got all these big creators. It turns out he ended up just donating, what, like 50000 Well, the first time he promised that he would be donating $100,000 to the charity of his own choosing, uh, which is usually how these things go, right? Because um, yeah. and, then, and then ended up Curious donating 75000 instead with no explanation for why it was the lower amount. And by the way, the giant check that they have there just says Ace, Ace Family Charity of Choice. So at wow. the time of the event, they never even specified. So we don't even know who. We really have or, no idea if that money ever went to any charity. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the maybe it he, did, maybe it didn't. He know. marketed this as a big charity event. He sold out the Staples Center. We calculate based on our biggest, uh, our best estimate that they potentially made uh, around $600,000. No, I'm sorry. That's the first event, and that one was at the Galen Center, which is at uh, USC. The second event, they upped the ante to the Staples Center, and that was the one, by our best estimate, they actually sold about $1.5 million in ticket revenue based so, off the ticket price. So the first time at that, he, he potentially made 600000 We uh, We did a whole crunching of the numbers. The second time, we estimate he made about $1.5 million. And then the second one was also a charity event. He donated apparently... Uh, a hundred thousand dollars today split with Chris Brown, who I don't know why the fuck he was involved. Because they like to associate with the best people. You That's know? what we do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Talk about wanting that clout. Yeah. Bill. And I mean, it was one point five million in ticket rev. Obviously, renting out the Staples Center, everything is very expensive. But even by our we best, deducted we deduct we deducted about five hundred thousand for all the costs. So they they still probably walked away with about a cool million for the event while donating 50k and we apparently like ace family charity was just, this this was just a huge racket and we tried our we did our due diligence to figure this out and i'll speak out of turn this guy there's no evidence count uh that contradicts the notion that they pocketed a shitload of fucking money yeah, i mean everything about the event was marketed as a charity event, which generally, when you go to a charity event, the money that you're paying for a ticket, you would assume is going to charity. All profit, that, 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 all profit that, goes to charity. That's a fair assumption. That so this yeah. he donated a hundred thousand, fifty thousand of it came from Chris Brown. I fucking gave a hundred thousand dollars out on Twitter, and I didn't have to sell one point, you know, two million dollars of <laughs> revenue and shit on fucking at Staples. Ace Family has a lot more subscribers than us. So. I'm pretty sure Ace Family's got more money than me. <laughs> yes. Not to toot my own horn, but I, but you know what I'm saying? Like, this guy is a true piece of shit. <laughs> so when the TikTok verse, um, TikTok verse, uh, YouTube boxing event that recently went down, hosted by the Ace family, I was like, oh boy, someone's gonna get burned here. Someone's gonna get burned here. Oh, there's this other way. I'm getting ahead of myself. He, bro, he did a How I Became a Millionaire. Dude, first of all, anytime someone tells how I became a millionaire, you just know by ripping people off like you who paid for this course. Yes. <laughs> That's like the only conclusion you could draw from that. Here. <laughs> Ace Family launches How I Became a Millionaire, which claims to teach how to become millionaires on social media for $50 per month. What's the tip? You're just a social media dude, and then you steal money from people and you do fake... <laughs> social events what's the tip i just don't understand jake paul tried to do this shit too like guys there's no secret there's no fucking secret on how to do become a millionaire and if you're like i don't care about literally scamming anybody yeah that's good advice i guess if you just want to make money and that that would be the honest advice from him this is where it all started now this is my home my dream home and I've been very blessed and fortunate to be able to have done it through Stop! the power of social media, which is why I'm here today to teach all of you the secrets to social media this is and to help you accomplish your dreams. A nightmare. In this program, I'll be teaching four courses. The first course is how to grow your social... So rich, you can't get a fucking decent audio equipment. It's like... 
the, there's like wind. There's wind. Sh- I, th- I think they just shot it on a phone, seemingly. High budget shit, dude. Yeah. Social media platforms. The second course is how to make money from social media. The third course is how to start a business. He's like, okay, once you start getting views on YouTube, you want to enable AdSense. This is huge, guys. This is how you make money on YouTube. What do you? What advice can you offer to the world? You are you are scamming people. And the last course is how to grow your business. In order to be able to have access to all these I think courses, Ty Lopez. you must join now. You only have 24 hours. Here in my garage. Totally. I don't know what else to say. I guess the next time I'll see you guys, we'll be inside the program. Oh my God, dude! This guy's such a wannabe. This is so embarrassing. By the way, this is the second of this type of scam that he ran. He already had one called the the Ace Club. Yeah, what was that? Because I remember him making a video being like, yo, I'm really sorry yeah. that you guys all lost your money. It yeah. wasn't my fault, though. Yeah, he, he blamed it all on a partner uh, that he was involved with. And and to be totally fair to him, although, uh, you know, based off of what we know, I don't know if this is true or not. But he claims he refunded everybody for that first <laughs> failed uh, venture into um, mentorship, I guess. Here's him talking about the Ace Club, another scam he runs. You guys have asked what has happened with the Ace Club when we were doing exclusive content with the Ace Club. Um, and unfortunately, the people that we partnered with Damn. in that adventure. Um, Somehow, these they ventures. Up, I don't really like to. Go ahead. You could say it. negatively, but oh, of course they just not. weren't good partners. No. Um, Why'd you partner with them? He's like, damn, it's just somehow whenever I partner with someone or do any kind of venture, you guys just lose your money and get nothing. It's just such a crazy coincidence, bro. Idiot. Unfortunately, scamming us. Oh, uh, he's the one that got scammed. Um, and it kind of like hurt us in a way because in reality, like you guys got scammed. Um, your fans, your audience that trusts you got scammed. Here he is saying, I'm a scammer. You guys got scammed. Well, he's not. These sure. other faceless people who I'm not naming, but because uh, I don't like to talk negatively, but they, they scammed you. I don't want to talk negatively about <laughs> these people, but they're fucking scammers and they ruined and they stole your money. They stole your money and don't come after me because I have nothing to do with the Ace Club. I partner with nothing to do with the Ace Club. He's like, hey, I vetted them. I partner with them. They stole your money. (laughs) Super unfortunate. They were bad partners. It's it's kind of like what he did with that guy who he wanted to collab with for the headbands. Right. He ripped them off and he goes, oh, this guy's just a clout goblin. Yeah, everyone's a clout goblin. (laughs) A clout pill. He wants that clout I need that clout. I need that clout. (laughs) Bro, I don't know who watches this shit, who buys this shit. This guy is the lowest of the low, man. Wait till you hear what happened with this boxing event, because this is too good. I think he might be going to jail. I really think he might be going to jail from this new one, and he should be. This is outrageous. Um, like, the way the site oh, was... Oh, you got to pull that. You guys got scammed, Zach, right here. Oh, okay. Um, Like, but they just weren't good partners. <laughs> um, they end up, unfortunately, scamming us. Um, right here, hold on. And it kind of like hurt us in a way because it hurt us in a way. Like not that much. We didn't lose money. We gained. We made. We money. actually made a it lot. It hurt of us money. in a way. Not a, not a, in one way, but not in other ways. In reality, like you guys got scammed. That. Um. Like. Paul, you guys got scammed. That's huge. Okay, I'll pull it. The way the site was built, it wasn't built to the degree that we needed to be because obviously the Ace family is one strong ass army. Oh, yeah. And come to find out the site wasn't built well at all. It's almost like you have a responsibility to make sure the shit that you're fucking shilling to your fans should not be a scam, bro. Hmm. So you guys didn't get the value and the quality you guys should have got. And that's why we were upset. And unfortunately, we had to stop the the the. Ace Club. By the way, this is a super official apology. 15,000 viewers on his Instagram live. This is like definitely the place to acknowledge you scammed your fans. And which we refunded everybody. So we appreciate all you guys for understanding that we had to stop that. 
Um, See, he does say that they refunded. Well, so, then how did they get scammed if they got their money back? Yeah. Something not adding up here. Yeah. Often. Well, anyway, this brings us to the modern day. This guy has basically a long career of scamming people. So now the box, the YouTube boxing thing is this big, uh, it's a big cash cow, let's be honest. Estimates say Logan Paul made like 10, 20 million off his fight with Mayweather. Uh, Jake Paul, who knows? I don't know. Triller lies about their numbers, so who knows? <laughs> Allegedly, what do I know? I know this guy, Ryan Kavanaugh, is a piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, he's run a Ponzi scheme, allegedly from his partner. So, of course, the guy is capable of lying, as we all are. But he lies, allegedly, according to his partner, In Ponzi Minecraft. scheme, Ryan Kavanaugh, owner of Triller. Ryan Kavanaugh, look him up, owner of Triller, scammer, allegedly. Peace and love. According to his partner, this guy suing me, by the way. What was I talking about? <laughs> Austin McBroom. And, uh, yeah. The uh, the fight, the big fight, okay, the so big night. You guys probably saw all this shit, like uh, Bryce Hall, who was fighting Austin, and there was all these undercars of TikTokers and YouTube's KSI's brother was in it. Bryce Hall famously was going like, I get $5 million just to step in the ring and another 5% pay-per-view, uh, you know, and a million-dollar knockout bonus. He was so, take, taking that 5%? 5% oh. difference is astronomical. It always comes back to the 5%. 5% means everything. <laughs> and so now fast forward like one week later, none of the fighters have been paid. Nobody's been paid. Nobody knows what's going on. Apparently they were planning on selling 500,000 subscriptions. They only sold 100,000. They've made nowhere near enough money to cover all these outlandish um guarantees here is um one of the guys talking about it did you see what he was tweeting like three months ago about the fight he was like no one's gonna get paid but did the fighters not get paid nope nobody got paid fighters didn't get paid artists didn't get paid none none no one got paid i'm pretty sure so Br bryce hall didn't get any money uh not not from what i know and I haven't got to actually talk to Bryce, I guess, yet. But since after the fight has happened, all the reports have said that no one's gotten paid. No they've gotten shit. Their, they've gotten their signing bonuses, which was like probably 100K, 50K, depending on the fighter. None of the other money's come through. Uh, are they telling them when they will? So that's that friend of the show, Dave Porkboy. Dave Porkboy. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. Friend of the show. The only man who loves pizza as much as me. I feel like we could be friends in a parallel universe. Me and Porkboy. A couple Maybe. Jews sharing a slice. He's Jewish, right? We determined that. Uh, Maybe. I think he is. Let's Google that. Is that enough for you guys to be buddies? Dave Porknoy, Jewish? <laughs> he has no pizza experience. He is Jewish. <laughs> well, there you go. We could be two pals sharing a slice. <laughs> in another life, eh? <laughs> Maybe in another life. So now it comes out. That Austin McBroom, Ace Family Scammer, Def Noodle, shout out. On the registered paperwork, this is the company that put on the show, Social Gloves. Wait for this. Owner and CEO, Austin McBroom. This motherfucker. Of course, and of course he does. That's what like I the assumed. Least surprising apparently. revelation ever. I assumed really he was, was running. The, he was behind this whole thing. You know. Now, uh, just to point this out, uh, you you likely know a lot more about this, so maybe this isn't that pertinent. But that is a trademark filing, not a like registration of an LLC or an S corp or anything. Dude, I, I don't know how much of a difference that makes, but I, I just. That isn't actually proof positive that he owns. If he Social personally Gloves. is filing for the Social Gloves trademark, right? He owns you, the company, right? Okay, that's, he wouldn't, that's be, what able, I thought he too, wouldn't be able to own it, right? You okay, know. yeah, that makes sense. He can't just. I just you, when I was I looking can't it over, I noticed file that for like Nike. <laughs> right? No, that totally makes sense. Just when I was looking it over, I saw that this was trademark stuff and not. It's a clue. It's a very powerful clue. That, uh, uh, yeah, agreed. It's a very powerful clue that he owns this shit. 
which he never disclosed. Well, it says and he's he, CEO. And he was the, I mean, and it he says was, he's the CEO. Oh, does it? Yeah, it says it, signatory's position, CEO. He's the CEO of the Ace Hat Company. Incorporated, right? He's the CEO of the company. That's dude. Let's not fuck around. He's filing. <laughs> I feel you. He, I, he, I, yeah, he yeah. owns it. Yeah, I just, I know what you're saying. We just he, don't want any other lawsuits. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Listen, at this point, I don't fucking care. <laughs> I, got, I actually, unlike uh, Keemstar, do have a team of lawyers at this point. <laughs> right, you really do. I got lawyers on retainers on retainers. <laughs> I'm being sued. <laughs> Uh, Let me yeah. know because I got a fucking files on top of files to swing back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> God, you're fast with that, Zach. <laughs> um. Yeah, he he put out a dude. He's such a he put out that tweet being like, I can't wait to talk about it. Where's that one? Oh, you know what? Jake Paul put out a bomb tweet. I'm not even gonna hate on this one. I know. I saw this and I sent it to you. I was like, Jake "This Paul's is powerful." First good tweet, <laughs> and only has seven thousand likes. I think that's a shame. You know, I've, I'm. He blocked me. Otherwise, I'd retweet this. Jake's engagement on Twitter is really, really low. I, I don't know if he's shadow banned or something, but like, that's not a thing. His tweets just suck. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Like, like for his for his popularity and size, he he doesn't get that many likes. Uh, generally, it's kind of surprising, but yeah. This was a fire tweet. Got to hand it to him. Um, he said, spot the difference. Austin McBroom and the Fire Festival guy. I think you're spot on, dude. That's not fraud. <laughs> the only difference is that the Fire Festival guy actually thought he could pull it off by some deluded weird thing. Austin's just straight up, I'm scamming people. I would call that uh, <laughs> false advertising. Yeah. Would you agree with that, Austin? False advertising or fraud? <laughs> That's not fraud. Okay. Maybe it is in this case. We'll find out. Dude, I hope he goes to jail, dude. The thing is, he didn't just rip off YouTubers. He ripped off, like, huge musicians. Like, there was big musical acts there, wasn't there? Uh, DJ Khaled, right. Ka oh, Khaled ain't gonna get ripped off, boy. He stays winning. He Another one. <laughs> dude, Khaled had a great line. He goes, you know why I've not been losing weight? He says, because I don't lose. Uh. I only win. I was like, hmm, I like that. <laughs> Here's Austin trying to get ahead of it. Wait till you read this shit. Before people start any rumors, we are working tirelessly to verify the financial results of Social Gloves event. We have hired a leading accounting firm. You mean a bankruptcy attorney? <laughs> as well as a first-class forensic auditor. You mean because you're being sued already by people like DJ Khaled? To make sure all of the amounts are properly accounted for. That doesn't mean anything, bro. That means you're in shit. Dude, you have a forensic... Auditor, that means you're in fucking trouble. Our sincere hope is to pay every fighter and every talent who participated. It's their hope to pay every fighter. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're cross Read between fingers. the lines here, guys. And by the way, another great place to make a statement in an Instagram story. <laughs> On the social gloves page, by the way. Right, which has like no followers at all. Super transparent. I mean... Even just the fact that he was the headline fighter in an event that he owned without disclosing that, like, just from the, like, people were betting on this in Vegas and stuff, right? Like, isn't that a oh, big yeah. deal? Um, Does that, doesn't that I matter that he, like, owns it without anybody knowing that and he's, like, the headline event? Mm, I don't maybe, maybe not I don't, I don't know it's it just seemed, a big deal. It just raised like, my eyebrow at that, too. If it's, like, CSGO Lotto where they control the software, then no. But. Right. I don't think it's uh, yeah. I guess illegal if, or anything. If he was uh, purposely uh, throwing the fight, or I guess in this case, Bryce doesn't matter. You can do that anyway, right? Our sincere hope is to pay every fighter and every talent who participated in this spectacular event in a reasonable time frame. Please continue to send us your receipts, as it assists in verifying the total amount or you're asking people to send in their receipts. Sorry, what, bro? They're literally saying, send us your receipts. Who? The viewers? Or yeah. The this is an Instagram story from Social Gloves. <laughs> They're saying, if you bought this thing, send us your fucking receipt they so we can verify the total amount earned. I'm sorry. What? Just watching my algorithms get crushed. <laughs> I, I read that. that and somehow my false. eyes just like went right over that without realizing how insane Yeah, that, that is. seems to me some kind of accounting scheme where they're going to be like, we only collected these many receipts that shows that we only sold 50. Like, this is how like you, some They sold the receipts. Receipt. They sold the tickets digitally. Like, what do you mean? How, they don't know send, how many tickets they sold? This is amazing. Please continue to send us your receipts 
as it assists in verifying the total amounts earned. The fuck? They sound so organized. <laughs> Somehow this is even crazier than I thought. That's not fraud. <laughs> Austin McBroom needs to get hooked up with Ja Rule. I would call that uh, false advertising. I'd love to see Ja Rule and Austin McBroom put it on an event. Let's think of how to dig ourselves out of this shit, man. We gotta think how to dig ourselves out of this. Send us your receipts. <laughs> we, got, we have forensic auditors. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, I imagine Austin McBroom at a big table with all these receipts. <laughs> he's got the he's got the bookie hat, the little visor, and he's just like he's smoking a cigar, just working late into the night. It's his sincere hope that everyone will get paid. Sincerely, he hopes that everybody's gonna get paid. Oh here fraud. No, it's not fraud. <laughs> Y'all gonna get paid, inshallah. <laughs> Do you guys take clout? <laughs> <laughs> he's got plenty of that. Here's Austin. This is his statement. Why does he care if he doesn't own the company, by the way? 100,000 PPV, PPV buys his cap. Only the haters want to believe that. <laughs> if anything, these people who are scamming, which isn't social gloves, a.k.a. me, are basically saying, and by the way, send in your receipts. We need those to keep tally of the sales. <laughs> are basically saying all of us fighters, fans base ain't shit. Oh, yeah. Now he's trying to be like, oh, no, they're attacking you, the fans. Right. They're, they're saying they're saying our fan base ain't shit. You, this is an attack on our fans. We all know Social Glow has put on one of the biggest social media events in history. The real numbers will come out soon. Still waiting. Also, Instagram story. <laughs> Just know Social Gloves weren't the ones who collected PPV sales. Sorry, what? Don't forget how you watched it. I don't know what that means. You're claiming piracy. I mean, welcome to... I mean, that's just... That's the way it goes. But, yeah, I mean, he's probably trying to shift blame to oh, yeah. the... His partner. <laughs> right. Sorry you guys got scammed, man. It was a bad part. Yeah, because I'm sure Social Glove is just the shell company that he set up, so I'm, I'm sure they're not equipped to actually do the ticket sales, so they probably partnered with... You know, Ticketmaster, whatever. Oh, like this that. is interesting. Who who added this? The owner of Social Gloves trademark is Ace Hats Collection. The CEO of Ace Hats Collection is, of course, Ace Family's Austin McBroom, and wife Catherine is listed as secretary. Right. We covered That's that. That's what we just looked at. Yeah. yeah. But also in that last link, uh, there's another Instagram story following that one from Austin. It says, uh, just wait till I can actually speak about oh, it. Oh, where is that? I don't see it here. It's the link before, the one you were just looking at, the highlighted. Highlight it for me, please. It's highlighted. Isn't this what I click? And then it's to the right. It, these, oh, it's three photos. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He says, uh, just wait till I can actually speak about it. Okay, dude. I'm sure <laughs> that's going to. So I know if you're a woman who would love to, s he's trying to get people to fight Tana. I don't care, bro. You're just, you're a scammer, dude. So the rumor has it they're de they're, they're getting declaring bankruptcy and nobody's going to get paid. Is there any uh, update on if they're declaring bankruptcy? There or wasn't as of this morning. Uh, I mean, this is an evolving situation, so um, they're definitely know. declaring bankruptcy. I mean, like, it seems uh, yeah like a likely outcome of this. All the rumors from the fighters and everything is that they're got to be declaring bankruptcy. Bye bye. <laughs> Which is just <laughs> fucking amazing. <laughs> so. Austin McBroom may be the worst person on the internet, and he's a total scammer, and he, probably, he might hopefully be going to jail. Yeah, all the uh, news articles that pop up in regards to the uh, bankruptcy <laughs> thing are from two days ago, so there hasn't really been an update. What's going on with the Ace Family channel? Like, who the fuck is supporting these p actual human pieces of shit? I mean, I kind of feel a pang of sympathy for them. I, I think you know, a lot of people just get uh, very enamored with these... Sort of God, they really families that that project this picturesque life, and they you know they they idolize them because they represent something that they hope to achieve someday. I think um, but they're just they're obviously such shitty people. Look how they use their kids too, boy. I know everything is with the kids. I think it's a theme song. Oh wow, this has like full like ratio. This has almost no dislikes. No, like, I mean their fans are the Ace. He's not wrong. The Ace family is strong. They are strong out there. What I mean, were you saying, AB? I was just saying, I think it's a theme song. It's so catchy. That's why they got the... the oh, let me hear it. Their kid's name's Steel? Yes, indeed. <laughs> That's so right. Oh, no, this Two is a new E's one. or T-E-A? 
It's not spelled like stealing, but obviously oh, because it. that's one of, that's his favorite thing. So <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he named his kid Steel like with S T E A L. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Hi, this is my son Steel and uh, Fraud. We didn't move into his house for no reason. This is my son uh, Jad Roll, Steel, Fraud, and Fire Festival. <laughs> I've been trying to think of a pun for the broom sweeping it under the rug again. Oh, Austin, the broom under the rug. Austin, yeah. sweep it under the uh, sp- yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see. It's tricky. Yeah. So, somebody in the comments will get a good one. Yeah, please. Let me know because it's been driving me insane. S- Austin McBroom. Austin McRiding a broom out of here. <laughs> That's a female. Would be a witch. Uh, he could be a warlock. Austin McUsing a broom to sweep his cell... Do you have to sweep yourself? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. The broom sweeps it under the rug again. Uh, yeah. uh, Did I already say that? I mean, I it's very pretty good. It. It's pretty good. It's, it's not bad. Thanks, guys. Thank you. There's a, perfect, there's a perfect one out there, and somebody's going to nail it in the comments. I just think he's such a shitty person and so transparently awful. The way that they just parade their family around... And it's so fake. These people are so miserable. They hate each other. He's always cheating on her. Like every week, it's like Austin McBroom's cheating on his wife. And I mean, who is buying this shit, man? Who? Well, the wife is apparently because she always defends him. Well, yeah, because they're like, you know, they're in deep together. Yeah. They hate each other, bro. I fucking bet. I bet on that boy. (laughs) Yeah. The fact that they have kids and they exploit them makes it a little less funny unfortunately like if it was just the two of them you know those kids aren't going to see a dime either <laughs> yeah probably not nope yeah there's no like no way yeah those kids will not see a dime I guarantee you yeah he'll be in jail and they'll be like what happened dude <laughs> hi my name's steel and um and my dad's in jail for fraud. <laughs> Hi, my name's Steel Fraud Firefest. First metal last. Oh, you want to know something great? Definitely. David Dobrik put out a new vlog. <laughs> this is my butt. You know, he, he, we talked about this. He like fucked up his friend's eye and like made him lose vision in his eye. And his new video is him paying for his friend's medical expenses for a video. I'm like, bro, haven't you been rich forever? Like, you fucked this guy's eye up when you were a kid, and now you're waiting to pay for it? Now that you're doing a vlog and you, like, need sympathy? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and you're going to throw the emotional in there? I mean, come on, bro. This He should have paid for his eye surgery long ago. This guy's walking around blind to one eye. David's like, I'm going to need you one day to win sympathy back. Go ahead, AB. I dare you to simp for David. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying, is it the same friend or are you mixing up Jeff? Well, how many people's no, no, eyes no. did he fuck up? No. You- no, not Jeff. He told a, a story when he threw a pine cone at his friend. Yeah. It hit him in the eye. He lost vision. He got like, par- he got like infected. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I'm assuming it's him. I don't know how many people's eye he's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> he's racking up the No, it is. It's definitely his friend. I recognize him. Yeah, right. it, it, yes. Yeah. Am I the only one that finds this a little fucked? He's been rich. He just bought a $10 million house like a year ago. And I mean, he's like, I've been waiting till I got into shit to pay for your eye surgery, you blind fucking loser. <laughs> so that I can exploit you. I mean, I don't know. It, it, ah, what? It's a good chance it probably w- He should have fixed his eye years ago. Yeah, I mean. Certainly. Years ago, David's been rich for a long time. I Apparently it was only like $60,000 too. I mean, he sells a lot of money, but like he's he's got money. How is this? Not, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, Jesus, I feel like a, there's a good chance it wasn't even. It's probably not his idea. Is he's got a crisis management firm because his oh, that's even better. Got trashed, and they were like, "What can we do?" That's and, even worse. Because he's like, "Listen, I didn't really want to fix your fucking eye, but now <laughs> the people are talking about it." Right. I mean, that's dipping deep into speculation. He, he, it, you know, maybe he did one. Let's watch a second. <laughs> I can't tell if that's the video or if that's dude. The, the laughter. I feel like I feel like he's since his return, he's amped it up. If anything, <laughs> this video is like out of control. The level of laughter going on. Wait, is that the video or soundbite? That's that, the fucking that's the video. video. That's the video. Are you kidding me, <laughs> dude? You're so annoying. 
<laughs> that's a sound. Effect. I refuse to believe that's real. No, that, that's a video. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> What's so funny? Yeah, what is so yeah, fucking yeah. funny? You're quick. You're good. I have only laughed that hard once in my life, and it's when like a Turkish fire guy lit someone else on fire. He was a fire safety guy, and he lit someone else on fire on an accident. That's the only time I've laughed that hard. <laughs> That's that front of me's ending joy. What is so funny? I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> How is this real? Room? No way. <laughs> What is this laughter? These are the sounds of hell, bro. If there's a hell, speakers are piping in that laughter, boy. Nonstop. Guaranteed, that is the sounds of like my hell. That was Keemstar. <laughs> there's no video. It's just them laughing. I don't even know what's happening. Oh, they pranked him? Jeez, they must have like tied his grandma up or something, been like, your, ma your grandma got assaulted. Ah, ah, ah. Psych. Ah. Oh, that's such a good prank. <laughs> this is not a prank. <laughs> but I'm just. <laughs> your grandma got kidnapped by ISIS. She's about to be beheaded. <laughs> oh, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> I had to like rush and clean their. Dude. I don't know, man. People are watching Austin McBroom. People are watching that. I got problem with the internet. <laughs> and you know what makes it even better? Guess who sponsored that video? Who? Pray tell. Fucking Triller. Triller. By the way, David, the only company that would touch him with a 10-foot pole right now is Triller. Triller. Ryan Kavanaugh, the people that are suing me for my expression of free speech. David Dobrik, who literally just, who, like, filmed someone being essayed and put it online. Triller's like, this is a good time to get a deal. It's almost <laughs> like Triller's trying to make a statement. Ryan Kavanaugh, tell me what's up. You, you're you sponsoring Jake Paul. New York Times, you know, pretty clear allegations on that one. R word. Written New York Times, credible paper. Gotcha. So, and then David Dobrik, it's like, Ryan Kavanaugh, are you trying to make a statement that you support... Essayist. What did Ryan Kavanaugh allegedly do again? I, I can't recall. Oh, so Ryan Kavanaugh, he's the owner of Triller. <clears throat> he was the CEO of like a big, I uh, forget the name of it, but he like, they went bank, like super bankrupt. The Relativity Media maybe? Yeah, the Relativity, Relativity they Media. They went super bankrupt yeah. and then he like got Triller involved and like he was accused of running a Ponzi scheme. Oh, by and who? All and he's got a really dark history. I read this all online. This is not me saying this. Right. This is all allegedly. Who was it that accused him of running a Ponzi scheme? Again? It was his ex-partner. Oh, he probably knew him pretty well. Oh, yeah. This Ryan Kavanaugh is a piece of shit. And so, of course, he would uh, support David Dobrik and Jake Paul. It's like he's trying to make a statement. Triller's such a shit app, dude. He linked it. Dude, Triller's such a ghost town. This app is dog shit. Even if you go to their <laughs> homepage, like the videos on the homepage have like no views. 600 likes. This is what's on the homepage. <laughs> and they're paying all these people too. It's pathetic. 60 likes. This was on the homepage. Such a fucking shitty app. I personally, based on my usage of Triller, gave it one star on the app store just because... I think it's a horrible app. Run right by horrible after you people. used it for a couple hours. Yeah, no, I tried it and it. I gave it one star. Right. Because it's run by horrible people. Ryan Kavanaugh, who's kind of the worst. I'm going to, I'm planning on talking more about the lawsuit. I'm waiting for the right time. That's coming up soon. But he's a horrible person. And, um, the app is horrible. I mean, it's just horrible. Maybe our viewers should download the app themselves, try it around for a couple hours and, you know, if leave, they, a, leave a review based off of their experience on the app. Yeah. Yeah, give it an honest review. Give it a give it a time. Give, you know, give it your honest take. I give it one stars based on my experience. Right, there. that's your experience. Uh, your mileage may vary. You may enjoy it more or yeah. less. But I, like I said, I personally be just because of Ryan Kavanaugh, the guy who owns it, and I didn't like it. I gave it one star on the App Store because it's just awful. 
what is this? 125 likes? This is their homepage? This place is a ghost town. There's nobody there. I gave it one star. That's what it deserves, personally. But you give it whatever you think. <laughs> you rate it what you think. They sponsored David Dobrik. Sponsored Jake Paul. Huh. Imagine being so shitty that Jake Paul leaves you. That's a one star <laughs> app. Right, he's out. Triller's a one star app. In your opinion. In fact, I want, you know what I think I should do? I should frame my one star rating of Triller and put it behind <laughs> me. Just to say, like, listen, I think Triller is a one star app. Right. And I don't think people should use it. Specifically because the owner, Ryan Kavanaugh, is such a nasty piece of shit. That's the one that whose business partner said that he ran a Ponzi scheme, allegedly. Ryan Kavanaugh. That's Ryan Kavanaugh. What was his name again? Ryan Kavanaugh's business partner alleged he runs run a Ponzi scheme, if you believe that. It's hard to believe. I don't know if I believe it or not. I'll have to do my own research on that. Yeah, do your own research for maybe, sure. Maybe, maybe well, people actually, should you know Google what? about Let, You know Ryan what, Ryan, here, Ryan Kavanaugh... I believe it. Unless his ex-partner was Austin McBroom, but if it wasn't Austin, then I, mm, I believe it. Interesting. Yeah. Well, hold on. Let me do my own research now on the show. Ryan Kavanaugh... Pon oh, here it is. Oh, my God. Huh, that link was purple. Variety.com. <laughs> Ryan Kavanaugh accused by ex-partner of running a Ponzi scheme. What a shitty dude who runs a one-star app. Wow, Variety, that's one of the two major trade papers in the entertainment industry. They're, <laughs> they're very reputable. Huge name. Yeah. They go, Ryan Kavanaugh is again embroiled in a legal battle. Man, this guy's litigious. He's suing me. Yeah, he's being sued for fraud. Dude, Ryan Kavanaugh is embroiled in a legal battle as the former CEO of Entertainment Stock Exchange. Former CEO has sued. Wait, I'm confused. Is again as the former CEO of an entertainment stock exchange. What, I'm, is the tense weird in the sentence? Has sued him for fraud and accused him of running a Ponzi scheme. That's strong. Wow. Unbelievable. Elon Spar filed a suit in Los Angeles Superior Court on Thursday, alleging that Kavanaugh persuaded him to go into business together under false pretenses. Wow. Shady as fuck. And, you know, I heard this guy's looking to uh, go public with Triller. That would be a horrible idea for people to invest in Triller. I, you know what would be a good idea? To short Triller. I'm so confident that they're not <laughs> Well, they're not on the market yet. But like, And this I is might... not financial advice. Uh, Ethan is not a financial advisor. No, of course right. not. But I might actually be interested in shorting Triller because you can actually make money from businesses failing. Right. Dave yeah. Moon's going to the moon, baby! Triller's going to the dirt. Baby! I just bought 39 million shares of Safe Moon. But anyway, this guy, Ryan Kavanaugh, he's on Twitter, by the way. What's his name? I follow him. Oh, do you? Yeah, no, I followed him because I just curious what he's up to. Here, let me look it up. Oh, no. Ryan Kavanaugh? Is, is it just is just Ryan Kavanaugh? Here, let me see. Ryan Kavanaugh. I mean, he's a public figure. Ponzi scheme? Oh, whoops. Ryan Kavanaugh <laughs> Ponzi scheme. You don't want that showing up next to his name as the owner of Triller. <laughs> Here he is. Yeah, Ryan Kavanaugh. Just Ryan Kavanaugh on Twitter. Huh. There he is. Here he is. Ponzi scheme. I just read he ran a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> and Variety. <laughs> By his ex-partner. Yeah, here he is, Ryan Kavanaugh. Hmm. He's got a website. Let's look at it. <laughs> Ryan Kavanaugh. There he is. Serious guy. He's a... Film and TV producer, entrepreneur, and Ponzi scheme enthusiast. Wait, no, sorry. That was what his ex-partner said. Alleged. <laughs> no, it's not alleged. His ex-partner did say that. Well, he made the uh, allegation. Yeah, he said he was Definition. running a Ponzi scheme. Right. That's an allegation. It's not a, he was making an allegation, but... Okay. <laughs> you get the idea. He's a philanthropist. I'd like to know who fucking... You know what kind of philanthropy he'll be running? When I short Triller... He's going to be running philanthropy to everybody who shorts Triller. That's free money. <laughs> yeah. Learn more. Maybe we'll open the court filing of him being sued for running a Ponzi scheme. No. Mm -hmm. Here he is trying to look like he's involved. Right? It looks like he's trying to. He's doing the producer thing. Yeah. He, and you know, uh, uh, what's his fucking name? Kevin, uh, some Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner's like, dude, come on. Don't lean so fucking close to me. You stink. <laughs> this guy gives me serious pig vomit vibes. 
pig vomit. He, like from Howard Stern, his producer, he hated. He says, "You look. He looks like a pig, and he makes me want to vomit." Gosh. <laughs> pig vomit. <laughs> he's an entrepreneur. Well, yeah. I mean, he's founded. Does very running successful. a pond? Does running a Ponzi scheme count as entrepreneurship? Yeah, that might be in reference to Relativity Media, perhaps. Mm. Uh, it's unclear though. He doesn't actually specify. <laughs> okay, let's see what kind of philanthropy he does. He has, uh, he's been donating. Uh, I donate to him. What the fuck you want from me? Want to put philanthropist in my bio? <laughs> okay, cool, dude. Anyway, his is Twitter. One star. I don't think you can rate people's twitter pages. i rate him oh, he's definitely a one-star person anyway elon spar listen guys this guy is fucking with my life this guy is suing me he's fucking with my life over some bullshit i can't wait to talk about literally for free speech fair use saying his fight sucked which it did jake paul versus ben asterisk so this guy's a piece of fucking shit Elon and well, that's just my that's just my opinion. His partner thinks his partner suing it for running a Ponzi scheme. Elon Spar filed suit in Los Angeles Superior Court on Thursday, alleging that Kavanaugh persuaded him to go into business under false pretense. While working at Cantor Fitzgerald, Spar had developed an idea for a stock exchange in which buyers could take equity in film projects. In 2018, Kavanaugh, fresh from the second bankruptcy of Revel Televity Media, sounds like a stellar CEO. I'm sure that Triller's in good hands. Told Spar he had a $6 million commitment to invest in the project. According to the lawsuit, Kavanaugh also claimed to have hundreds of millions of dollars in commitment to finance a slate of films under his new company, Proxima Media. Spar came to discover that that was not true, the suit alleges. That's literally what the Fire Festival guy did. Very similar. Very similar. It had virtually no capital, he said. It had no viable financial commitment, certainly nothing approaching the magnitude of what was presented. Over time, as Kavanaugh withdrew and replaced one funding proposal after another and each of his lies exposed, it became apparent to Spar that Kavanaugh was operating at Proxima and its related entities as essentially a Ponzi scheme, using meager new investment capital to satisfy old debts, diverting corporate funds for personal use. Oof. Instead of paying his employ, oh yeah, he's hitting that Mario. Wee! Instead of paying his employees and contractors, and manipulating the corporate books to uh, uh, and records to conceal his misrep, this guy should be in jail. By the sound of it, should be suing me. He should be in jail. <laughs> when was this uh, article? Like how long ago? This was is this? from 2019, June oh, 7th. So that's fresh. probably still working its way through the courts, huh? Oh yeah, interesting. You might need a little cheddar from elsewhere. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, that's super shady, dude. That's what Variety broke. That's crazy. So, David Dobrik, huh? So he sponsored David Dobrik, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> David Dobrik, apparently... Tri and then that's the other thing. Tr David, the David, the generous soul who fucked this guy's eye up, made him blind in an eye, is now giving him $60,000 from Triller. He couldn't even dish it out of his own fucking pockets. Uh, I, I think the money is actually from some charity or something. Oh, so, yeah. so he pockets the Triller money? Yeah, I don't think the Triller money goes... <sighs> he never explicitly says that the check is from Triller. He says it's from the... Basically, where's the Triller part? He just is like, I on Triller, guys, go... Follow yeah, the my page. The check lists uh, Ariana Healthcare Foundation, a foundation that helps people who cannot <laughs> afford surgery. Oh, so he didn't even fucking pay a dime for this friend. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Triller's sponsoring him. So good luck to David on Triller. I'm sure that'll be going really I good. I missed the mark with that one. You guys want to do this compliment battle to close it up? Not really. How long have we been going? About a uh, hundred minutes, hour, hour forty. It's late. I guess we should just lock it up. Did we really have a full show? It didn't feel like it. Uh, yeah. I mean, my clock said an hour in six minutes, and plus the thirty-three 30, yeah. minutes of the beginning. I guess, you know, and then we're gonna do ads too, so it'll be. We didn't have a true um, off the rails because we we didn't have one of these uh, sharing story segments, which we all love. We were gonna do a compliment battle, but we'll we'll do that next yeah, next week. Let's do it next time. But the, the it's we really got a funny. really late start today. It's uh, it's already it's going on six thirty right now. 
I'm gonna compliment the shit out of you guys. Thanks, bro. Do you guys want to just like compliment me before we go? I don't have anything. Prepared Tiny for hand, you. little fucker, <laughs> Judas. But try your <laughs> biting the hand that feeds. Let me see your hands, dude. Put them up. Let's put them up. Lower. You're Not out of biggest. frame. Come on, you're out of frame. Not the biggest I've ever seen, AB. What's your ring size? That's what she said. What? What's your ring size? She said not the biggest I've ever seen. Precisely. That's what she tells me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know my ring size, to be honest. Mm, okay. Wait, do you not wear a wedding ring? I don't. Me neither. I don't either. I have a tattoo on my wedding finger, though. Is it representative of your marriage? or is it Sure. Un- <laughs> sure. Okay. I hope this doesn't make you sound like a douche. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. <laughs> I'm just kidding, A.B. You know. Yeah. You, I mean, can say, you can say it. You stopped. Go ahead. You can say it. Well, I wasn't going to say anything. I said, you said A.B. I lo- and then you stopped. I, uh, it's, yeah, listen. You don't love me? Chill, dude. <sighs> no, I I, I it's okay, don't know. It's okay. It's okay. I'm, th- I'm you got a hug. To it. What more do you want? Yeah, you're the only fucker that got a hug. Yeah, you got a hug. What more do you want? <laughs> I do love A.B. I do. I love all you guys. We all, well, there's love for everybody here. It's okay. Alfredo loves me. Oh. oh, you can get on the. Uh, oh, Zach, gets, Zach got mad when I got all the love last time holding Alfredo. Get, get in the red. Zach, are you upset? That get that, AB, you get are that. you upset that AB got a hug and you didn't? I mean, I, he brought it up like four times. I I do cherish what you think about me, so I'm a little. Upset. You know, I love you, Zach. You're I my know, golden boy. I know. <laughs> I know. It's just like you golden. Know, it's AB. Do you want to yeah. come get me a hug on camera? I would love to give you. Come over here. Get on over there. Get on over there. Do it quick, though. Ian, you want a hug too? Here we go. All right, Zach. Live it up. Live it up. Favor this moment, Zach. Oh, you're out of frame. Get wrecked. Get fucked. You're out of frame, Zach. Beautiful. Oh, it's so cute. Look, the dogs don't like it. Nobody likes this. What are we still doing here? Okay. Oh, that's so cute, guys. Come here. I'm not a hugger. Come on. I'm not a hugger. I don't want to hug. I'm about to sexually harass you and to give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> you come, you come, give me a hug. I'm blasting with salt. Oh yeah, those things are awesome. We got a bug of salt. It's really cool. It shoots salt at flies. It's fucking awesome. I've shot. It's about, not that cool. It's I've shot cool. about two flies so far, and I've shot Zach about ten times. So far. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you don't like it, Av? Because he keeps shooting us with it. <laughs> oh well, that's not a defect with the product. That's just a problem with Dan. Hey, gun, hey, guns don't shoot people. People do. That's right. <laughs> you need love, Dan. <laughs> All right, guys. So this was our off the rails. Hope you guys have fun. Remember, I re- actually, you know what I really want to do? Remind me. I want to do a thriller one star rating and frame it. Sam, you got that? Thank Sa- you. Sam's on it. Sam's because good. I feel it's important to commemorate. When I cast my meaningful vote, <laughs> and I says, "Listen, I, I take my product reviews very seriously. I, yeah. You know, I'm a social media star, one might say, and so <laughs> take to yeah. So rating social media sites is really important. So I'm going to give it a one star rating because I think they can improve, and I think they could find a better CEO who's not a. Yeah, you might want to leave some constructive feedback on. Uh, in addition to the one star, or perhaps right. some commentary on what you think about the owner of the Ryan company. Kavanaugh. Ryan, yeah, that's Ryan Kavanaugh, by the way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna frame it, and I think that will look good on all of our backdrops. Yeah, maybe he'll become the new CEO of Triller. You never know. You want me to be the CEO of Triller? Well, I mean, fuck Kavanaugh, you know. Well, we could find someone better than me. Yeah, or Triller could just stop existing too. I don't think anybody would really miss it. Yeah. I'm going to start an investing club where everyone just short. I'm going to start a hedge fund where it, the only bet is shorting Triller. <laughs> it's only one position. It's the short Triller. <laughs> All right. That's it. Um, fun times, eh? We'll be back on Friday. You know what it is. After dark. See you then. Peace.